Hey everyone, this is Paul, SouthP24 from Instagram and YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to build this custom figure. It's a six inch soft goods Boba Fett as he appears in the new Disney Plus series. Um, I'd say it's more of an intermediate to an advanced build for those of you who work on custom action figures. But if you felt anything like I did, uh, some of the pre-orders and the announcements on things that were coming out from Hasbro or SH Figure Arts, it was a little underwhelming. So I felt like this guy deserved to be elevated uh, to a more true deluxe status. And um, my, my goal was really aim for a Mezco 112 style figure. Uh, and as you can see, I think I've come pretty close to achieving that. So I'll take you through step-by-step step what goes into building this guy. Uh, all the parts are readily available out there, the, the base figure underneath and everything. Um, so yeah, we'll take you through. If you have questions, feel free to leave comments down below. You can contact me on Instagram and uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, to start things off, here's a few toy photos I took of this Boba Fett figure. You can see that I really wanted him to look good on the shelf, but I also wanted him to have fantastic articulation. So that brings us to one of the most important decisions when starting this project, and that is which base body to use underneath all the armor and all the soft goods to make sure that it scales well with your other Black Series figures, but also has the best range of motion. For me, more and more, I'm uh, tending to use the 112 Drawman figure for these types of projects. And of course, we're going to need the Boba Fett model kit from Bandai. I like the uh, 112 Drawman figure because they're relatively cheap. You can get them for about 25 bucks, but they just got a great range of motion. They come with extra hands and they just scale well with your other six inch Star Wars figures. I'm not a great sewer, so I just bought the black pants, uh, t-shirt and long sleeve shirt. And of course, uh, I got the 3D printed blaster. You can uh, go that route as well for the belt, uh, holster. I ended up making mine out of leather. And of course, just have great reference pictures because you're going to refer to them a lot as you're working. So as we get into the base body, as much as I like the Drawman figure, it comes with bare feet. So what I've been opting to do is to take some Black Series boots, cut them off a uh, fodder figure that you don't need. I've been doing this for a lot of my customs now, so I'm hollowing out the boot. So it really looks natural where the calf of the Drawman figure slides into it. And you can also help uh, just establish the height so it scales well with your other figures. The sewing part of this project really can be the biggest hassle, but if you can find a decent pair of cargo pants uh, and then the, the black shirts, it's going to save you a ton of time. All I had to do was cut the pants a little bit shorter at the ankle. And then this is the funny thing. I saved that piece of material and then I slide it back over the shoulder to create that layered look and it requires really minimal sewing. So it was just two stitches to keep those shoulder pieces in place. Then what I did was I cut the sleeves off a t-shirt to create more of a vest and that'll go on top of everything. So you have a long sleeve t-shirt, the two shoulder pieces and then the sleeveless vest and now we're ready to start adding our armor. If you've ever worked with the Bondi model kit before, you know that all the pieces snap together. This includes the wrist gauntlets, the armor, the knee pads, and the helmet. But for us to get it to sit closely next to the base body, we need to actually remove all those little tabs. So what I do using a Dremel is I just start carefully removing all those little tabs and parts. You wanna be careful not to ding the front of the piece because you can end up ruining it. And then as you make your way, it's always good to test fit against the body just to make sure that it's gonna sit flush. The helmet of the kit works the same way, it snaps together. So we need to Dremel out a hole so it can slide over the neck of the Drawman figure. For attaching heads, my preferred method is hot glue. You put a little bit of Vaseline on the neck to prevent it from sticking, and then you fill the head with the glue. As it dries, it creates the perfect socket, but it doesn't actually stick to the neck, making it removable. Let's take a few seconds to talk about hands. The Drawman figure comes with 10 interchangeable hands, but they're all flesh colored. So I actually like to use a synthetic dye to dye them black rather than paint them black. 
It takes about 10 seconds in boiling hot water, but the benefit is that with the dye, you won't get any paint rub, so you can use them freely with the accessories and weapons, and you don't have to worry about paint coming off. Moving from the hands down to the feet, uh, if you remember one of our first steps was we dremeled out the Black Series boots. I like to warm these up, uh, apply a small amount of glue, and they're going to slide perfectly over the cut shin on the base body. Uh, you got to make sure you're lining it up straight, and at the same time you can try and tuck in the pants into the top of the boot so it looks like a natural fit. To create the layered knee pad look that Boba has, I'm just using some wider elastic strapping which later I'll be gluing the model kit piece directly to. I had actually chosen the Han Solo boots because they have a smooth surface that we can glue some spats to. To make the spats, I, I make a template out of paper. I'm then cutting that out of some fake leather material, which will ultimately be glued directly to the plastic boots. As you're making your way around the back, just try and get the two pieces of material to match up without too much excess. And then I used a mahogany brown paint, just a dry brush over top of the leather to try and uh, make it more screen accurate. The last step is I don't want to use the Han Solo feet themselves, so I just use the Black Series uh, Return of the Jedi Boba Fett feet, which is a, a more screen accurate look. So I'll admit I didn't record any video of myself making the skirt piece that um, drapes on the back of the figure. It's a straight piece of material that I ran some wires through to give it more of a dynamic look. I'm using the same wider elastic band as the basis for the belt, and that skirt then tucks up underneath, and I just put a small amount of glue to keep it in place. For the holster and the main leather belt, I chose to make it by hand with the same fake leather. Uh, of course, you can go out and get some 3D printed versions as well, which could be easier. What I did is I've taken his blaster, I just make sure that I cut my piece to size, and it's all just small amounts of glue. Because any time you're working with uh, more of a crazy glue and material, it can get a little brittle. So applying just small amounts, and then that holster piece will just slip under the main leather belt as you're working your way around the waist. And once again, I'll go back with a dry brush of mahogany brown to try and lighten the tone of the leather. And any places on the black material where I might have gotten some glue and it looks a little bit dirty, I'll take some black paint and then just go over that to clean it up. Okay, finally we're onto the armor. If you're using the Bondi kit, you're going to have to paint the gauntlets. I used a burnt red color and I used these elastic straps to create the arm tubes. As you're working your way through the armor piece, I recommend just really going slow, test fit every piece. Uh, use a very small amount of glue and then hold it in place for about 30 seconds while it dries. One of the more complicated steps in the armor is that you do need to add a small amount of fabric that's just going to cover over top of the shoulder piece. Again, I'm using the wider elastic strapping. Then you're going to tuck it under the chest and it's also going to tuck in behind the back piece. Once you've got it in place, it should look something like this. You can see those two elastic straps will be tucked behind the chest and the back plate. And of course, the little collar armor piece will also sit over top of that. And then lastly, we have the chest pieces themselves. With these, you really just want to go slowly because you want to make sure you get them lined up properly with the right spacing. And of course, that little dot in the middle. A few last little details to wrap up on the belt. If you went with a 3D printed belt, then it might be easier for you. I did that, but then ended up cutting up the parts like the buckle and attaching those directly to the leather. And we also have the arm tubes from the previous step. We put a bit of glue on those and then slide them up under the fabric over the shoulder armor. So whether you're using a Hasbro or the Bondi model kit, it's not gonna have that damage to the back of the jetpack that happened from Return of the Jedi. So I used a small amount of epoxy to just sculpt in the, the look of that steel plate. The jetpack's also going to require a paint job, so uh, find a good reference photo and then just work your way slowly with a combination of reds, blues, and yellows. For Boba Fett's weapons, you have a couple of different options. You can take them both directly from the Throne Room Deluxe Vigor, which isn't as easy to find. 
Uh, you can also get the blaster from the Tython figure, or you can do what I did, which was you can get them 3D printed, and it, you actually end up getting a better quality weapon. You'll just have to do your own paint application. So as we know, Boba Fett's armor gets repainted. Uh, somehow he finds the time in, in between saving Grogu to do a full paint job. But uh, you'll notice there still is some chipping in a few spots. And it gives it that worn-in look. But you don't want to go over the top. So I'm using a chrome silver color and just lightly touching the edges to give, give it a bit of that Star Wars lived-in feel. Speaking of which, it wouldn't be Star Wars without a little bit of grime, so I use a wash called Oiled Earth from Vallejo, and I'm not going crazy here, I'm just touching some of the edges and some of the dents, uh, getting into all the crevices of his shin armor, his boots, his feet, uh, and again, you're just adding a slight amount of lived-in look to all the armor pieces, but you're not going over the top. And as a final little detail, don't forget a little bit of red paint um, to do his LED light display in his chest armor. You might have already noticed in the previous step that some of the decals were already applied to Boba Fett's chest armor. I'm using the water slide decals that came with the model kit. I find that easier to use than stickers and definitely easier than painting those lines. If you find it difficult working with water slide decals, I recommend a product called Microsole put a small amount on a q-tip it just helps move it around and then allows it to dry without any bubbles and as a final step we can put boba's visor in place and we're all done so as we wrap up i'll leave you with a few more shots of the final figure if you remember we were trying to make a boba fett that really could look amazing just standing on the shelf or maybe mixed in with a mezgo collection but at the same time if you're going to use them for toy photography then you have the combination of that super articulated body underneath, the soft goods, which really makes them so lifelike and not even seem like a toy. So while it's unfortunate that Hasbro or Figure Arts haven't really come through with an official version of the book of Boba Fett look, you can see that all the parts are readily available. Uh, some of those Hasbro releases can even be helpful to try and source the helmet and belt and definitely the blasters. But with a little bit of effort, uh, you can have an ultimate version of Boba Fett and uh, really take pride in knowing that you've made it yourself. As always, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below and I'll get back to you. You can always find me on Instagram, at SouthP24. I love sharing ideas, uh, different projects you're working on. It's that great sense of community that helps us all become better and, and come up with some great custom projects. And... Uh, if you've made it this far, thanks so much for sticking with the tutorial. I really appreciate it. I hope it's been helpful and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.